Welcome to Form++. This is a more intuitive way of gathering people's information. It's designed for whenever you have large groups of people coming in to your organization and you want to gather their information quickly and effectively. It's designed to replace the typical pen and paper forms and surveys that you typically are handed to. So, with that being said, let us begin our tour of this app. Whenever you first start the app, you'll be welcomed with this home screen. So, in order to progress to any other activities, click in the top left corner. Upon clicking in the top left corner, you are welcomed with this navigation drawer, where you are, have a list of further options that you can navigate to. To begin, we'll go to Edit Form. Upon selection of Edit Form, you are greeted with this screen. At the very top, it labels what activity you're currently viewing, along with the title of your form. If you'll notice, it is untitled. You'll, under that, you have the options to save, preview, or go to form. So if we click preview, we can see this is our generic form. There's nothing on it except for name and email. This is very unrealistic for a normal form. So let's create a more personalized form. We'll start with the title. Let's call this general. Now, if we go to the preview, we will notice our form now has the title general. There are many more options here that you can see. For instance, we can gather the phone number and birthday of potential clients. We can create a text field option asking them for their favorite pet. We can also, if you have a large group of people coming in that are of a particular group, for instance, let's say you have the IEEE members coming in, you can add a group and call them IEEE. This, whenever you click Preview Form, will now have displayed in the very bottom group IEEE. This is designed so then you can filter all these new members into that group. You will also notice that all of the items that we have created have red minuses next to them. This is designed so in case if you add something and you decide you don't like it or notice there's a misspelling, you can simply click it and it will remove it. You can also add multiple choice items. And if you desire more than one option, simply click the green arrow and it will create as many items as you feel that you need. And you can also create checkboxes in case if there's more than one possible selection. and then click preview to make sure everything looks how you want. Now, if you notice the form name has changed from untitled to untitled with an asterisk. This denotes that there has been changes made to the form. At this point you should save your form if you wish to retain these changes for later use. Here you'll be presented with the options to either create a new file or, if you already had a saved form, save it there. Here we'll be creating a new form called Generic. And you'll notice it says Saved, indicating that's changed. The form name up top has also changed to your new form name, Generic. And we can click on Preview and see that our form is still here. Now, we can go to form. Our form looks as we designed it. So, you have your form built, and you're ready to hand it out to your people. 
So, what you'll want to do now is click Lock Form. After pressing the lock button, you will see this screen saying Warning. This is not to be worried about. It is just simply a screen informing you that the back button will be disabled and so will the navigation drawer. This is to prevent any accidental activity changes while the form is being passed around. It will also ask you to enter a password. For the, our password, we will simply use the word form and we will click accept. Now if you notice the form has changed slightly. There's no longer a lock button at the bottom and it also no longer indicates which group you are using. So this is what you would hand out to your clients. They would fill in their names and an email. But let's say they decided it wasn't worth filling out their email, they just wanted to give their name. It won't allow that. They are required to enter a name and an email at minimum. After that, anything else they wish to enter is up to them. And then they will click Submit. It will now reset the form for them, and they can hand it to the next person. After pressing Submit, the information is now stored in the device's contacts which will then be synced to Gmail contacts as soon as the device decides is necessary. When all the clients have received the device and you no longer wish to have the form locked, simply click up here and then select unlock and it will ask you to enter your passphrase. And your device is now unlocked again. So you created a form Let's say you no longer wish to use this form anymore. So you'll go back to Edit Forms. There are two options to creating a new form. You can either go to Preview and delete all of these, or, much simpler, click up here and click New Form. This will create a little warning telling you that you're about to create a new form and any unsaved changes will be removed click yes and you have a brand new blank form to work with. So you saved a form and now you wish to load it back again. Simply click in the top left corner then click load form. Here you see a simple preview, a little spinner at the top and load and delete. So click here and then click your form and there's the form that you had created. From here, you can delete your form if you no longer wish to have it, or you can click Load. And if we go back to Edit Form, we'll notice it says Generic, and we click Preview, our form is there again. One of the things that makes Form++ more powerful is the ability to handle groups. So if we open the navigation drawer and click on Create Group, we see this list of everybody who is on our contacts. From here, we can give a group name, and then select contacts we wish to be in that group. And then create the group. We can also edit any groups that we have made. In the top left corner is a spinner that contains all groups that are on the device. Directly underneath it is a list of everybody who is in that group. Currently in coworkers there's nobody. On the other side is a list of everybody who is on that device. So you can simply select people then click the left green arrow to add them to a group. They will now be removed from the right. This will only show members that are not in the group. So if we view 
our created groups. We'll notice it has the two people that we put in it. Say we don't want Chase Jones in our group anymore. Simply select his name and then click the right arrow. If we decide that we no longer wish to have this group, we can simply just click delete group. Another feature of this app is the ability to open up the email app. The reason why you open up the email app instead of using a built-in email is because the default email app that comes on all stock Android devices is able to send emails to groups, whereas Gmail and other emailing apps cannot. This allows you to send an email to everybody in a new group that you have created or into a previously generated group. That concludes this tour of our app. To exit our app, just simply double tap the back key.